Hi, I'm Dr. Dave. Soto's syndrome, also known as cerebral gigantism, is a rare genetic disorder characterized by excessive physical growth during the first two to three years of life. The disorder may be accompanied by mild mental retardation, delayed motor, cognitive, and social development, hypotonia, low muscle tone, and speech impairments. Children with Soto's syndrome tend to be large at birth and are often taller, heavier, and have larger heads, macrocrania, than is normal for their age. Symptoms of the disorder, which vary among individuals, include a disproportionately large and long head with a slightly protrusive forehead, large hands and feet, hypertolerism, an abnormally increased distance between the eyes and Down's landing eyes, clumsiness, an awkward gait, and unusual aggressiveness or irritability may also occur. Although most cases of Soto's syndrome occur sporadically, familial cases have also been reported, characterized by overgrowth and advanced bone age. Affected individuals are dysmorphic with macrodolicocephaly, Down's landing palpebral fissures and a pointed chin. The facial appearance is most notable in early childhood. Affected infants and children tend to grow quickly. They are significantly taller than their siblings and peers and have an unusually large head. Adult height is usually in the normal range. However, people with Soto's syndrome often have intellectual impairment, and most also have behavioral problems. Frequent behavioral issues include attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD, phobias, obsessions and compulsions, tantrums, and impulsive behaviors. Problems with speech and language are also common. Affected individuals often have problems with sound production, stuttering, and a monotone voice. Additionally, weak muscle tone. Hypotonia may delay other aspects of early development, particularly motor skills such as sitting and crawling. Other signs and symptoms of Soto's syndrome can include an abnormal side-to-side -side curvature of the spine, scoliosis, seizures, heart or kidney defects, hearing loss, and problems with vision. Some infants with his disorder experience yellowing of the skin and whites of the eyes, jaundice, and poor feeding. A few people with Soto's syndrome have developed cancer, most often in childhood, but no single form of cancer has been associated with this condition. It remains uncertain whether Soto's syndrome increases the risk of specific types of cancer. If people with this disorder have any increased cancer risk, their risk is only slightly greater than that of the general population. Mutations in the NSD1 gene cause Soto's syndrome. The NSD1 gene provides instructions for making a protein that is involved in normal growth and development. The function of this protein is unknown. However, in the Japanese population, the most common genetic change leading to Soto's syndrome deletes genetic material from the region of chromosome 5 containing the NSD1 gene. In other populations, small mutations within the NSD1 gene occur more frequently. Genetic changes involving the NSD1 gene prevent one copy of the gene from producing any functional protein. It is unclear how a reduced amount of this protein during development leads to learning disabilities, overgrowth, and the other features of Soto's syndrome. About 95% of Soto's syndrome cases occur in people with no history of the disorder in their family. Most of these cases result from new mutations involving the NSD1 gene. A few families have been described with more than one affected family member. These cases help researchers determine that Soto's syndrome has an autosomal dominant pattern of inheritance. Autosomal dominant inheritance means one copy of the altered gene in each cell is sufficient to cause the disorder.
Unfortunately there is no standard course of treatment for Soto's syndrome. Treatment is symptomatic. Soto's syndrome is not a life-threatening disorder and patients may have a normal life expectancy. The initial abnormalities of Soto's syndrome usually resolve as the growth rate becomes normal after the first few years of life. Developmental delays may improve in the school age years. However, coordination problems may persist into adulthood. Thanks for listening. Goodbye.